Jeff, what are we looking for out here in the woods of Shirley? Shh, keep it down. What are we looking for out here in the woods of Shirley? So, right, we're hunting a unique beast. It's a monster. Like a bear or a moose, something like that? No, 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 nothing like a bear or a moose. Well, what kind of beast is it? Uh, how do I know what I'm looking for? There's a lot of woods out here, Jeff. I'm like, here's the thing. I'm not sure what kind of creature this thing is. I guess we'll know it when we see it, but we're getting close. There's Mulpus Brook up ahead. The only thing we're getting close to is Route 2A. Yeah, yeah, but still, we're getting close. We're lurking through Shirley, Massachusetts, on the hunt for a one-of-a-kind beast they call the Egopantis. Hello, legendary townies. I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 303 of the New England Legends podcast. I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for joining us as we search New England for ghosts, monsters, aliens, eccentrics, and all of the weird history that makes this place special. Did you know that most of our story leads come from you? This one did. Thanks to Joanna McGugan for this tip. If you've got a strange tale you think we should check out, please reach out to us anytime through our website. We love hearing from you. Our website is the place where you can find dates for my ongoing story tour, dates to see Ray's band, The Pub Kings, and links to everything else that we do. And we love when you share these stories with your friends or when you take just a minute to post a review for us. Also, be sure to join our super secret Facebook group. We're going to hunt for the Ego Pantis right after this quick word from this sponsor. So we just came out of the woods near Mulpus Brook and Route 2A and Shirley is right in front of us. Yep. Right, we're getting close. I have a solid lead on this one. So we're going to make a left and walk up Route 2A just a short ways. Oh, Jeff, there's a liquor store on our left. Yeah, we're almost there. Oh, the Bull Run restaurant is next to the liquor store. And I'm told that is where we'll find the Eagle Pantis. Inside? Inside. Let's go. Oh, this is a great old historic restaurant. It is, and it's been around a long time. The, the earliest parts of the building date way back to 1741. Back then, it was called Sawtell's Tavern, named after Obadiah Sawtell, a colonist who knew how to throw a party. Yeah, he did. There's obviously been a number of additions since then. Yeah, no, they've expanded quite a bit. There's a stage for live music, there's mm -hmm. a restaurant, and the bar looks like it's right out of the late 1700s. It's easy to imagine colonists sitting here discussing the American Revolution over some ale. Yeah, this place has got a great time warp feel for sure. And the beast we're looking for should be right over there by that fireplace near the bar. All right, let's head over. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this is an animal that I've never seen before. No, no, me neither. So there's this large hairy head mounted over the fireplace. It's got a snout almost like an alligator meets a duck-billed platypus. It's bumpy and gray and surrounded by black hair that's sort of long and shaggy like an ape. There are two eyes at the top with what looks like blondish eyebrows. Yeah. I mean, what the heck is this thing? It's the Egopantis. And they say that this was the last of its kind. It's now extinct. Well, whatever this thing is, it looks like it would have been a, a very large animal, like moose-sized. Well, to find out how the Egopantis got on the wall of the Bull Run restaurant, we're going to travel back in time to the earliest days of the tavern. Let's head back to 1787 and meet Captain Nathaniel Smith. It's June of 1787 here in Shirley, Massachusetts. America is still a new country and a new idea. The long-fought war for independence ended four years ago. And as you can imagine, the states and country are going through some growing pains. That they are. I mean, you fight a war so you can stop paying taxes to some faraway king. But for the states and the new nation to grow people still need to pay taxes. Death and taxes. They can't be avoided no matter how many people you kill, right? <laughs> That's so true. Shay's Rebellion just ended about four months ago, and some folks here in Shirley are still bitter. One of those people is Captain Nathaniel Smith, who fought with Shay. So Shay's Rebellion was an armed conflict that went down in western and central Massachusetts just last year. Massachusetts is in debt, and the only way out of that debt, and the only way to provide services to the people of the Commonwealth through taxes. Which is well and good. Everyone understands they need to pay something. Yeah, sure, but folks in Massachusetts feel like their leaders pushed it too far. I mean, it's one thing to tax citizens, but now the Commonwealth is taxing their trades and businesses as well. I mean, to many, it feels like double taxation. And the nickname Taxachusetts is born. <laughs> exactly. So folks were mad enough to stage an armed rebellion that began in Springfield, Massachusetts, when Revolutionary War veteran Daniel Shea led 4,000 troops to raid the Springfield Armory. 
Shea's second in command was Captain Nathaniel Smith of Shirley. The rebellion was extinguished four months ago, and so Captain Smith is back in town, hoping the rebellion will fuel some changes to government. Still, life goes on even when your political fight runs its course. So Captain Smith heads out on his property to do a little hunting. I mean, it's just the thing he needs to take his mind off the high tax rate. All right, Captain Smith has his musket at the ready. Shh. We don't want to scare any game away. So Captain Smith has his musket at the ready. I know there's deer out here. Maybe an occasional bear. What's that over there? I I, I don't know. Oh my God. What is that? Captain Smith is raising his musket. I, I think he hit it. The animal's running off. Ten days. That's what they say. 10 days. 10 days. That's how long it takes for this beast to finally die. For 10 days, Captain Smith tracks the bleeding animal until finally it expires right near his property, just behind Sawtell's Tavern. When Captain Smith sees the animal, he doesn't know what to make of it. Uh, Of course. I mean, it's like nothing anyone's ever seen before. So Captain Smith has the beast taxidermied and mounted. And the legend of the Egopantis is born. With so many people in town buzzing about this strange and undocumented animal, Captain Smith decides to donate the mounted head to the tavern. And there it's remained over the fireplace ever since. And that brings us back to today. Well, Jeff, as always, I have so many questions. (laughs) As well you should. And our first question should be for the bartender. Hey, uh, excuse me. Uh, What do you have on tap? Beer. Yeah, yeah. Two of those. Thank you. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers. So I know enough about biology that there can't be one of any animal unless it's some kind of birth defect and the remains are totally misidentified. Yeah, that's totally true. And the Egopantis' exact origins are going to remain a mystery. Now, there's a story mounted on the wall next to the head that says it was Captain Nathaniel Smith who bagged the animal, that it died on the tavern property, and they say they even still have the musket he used to shoot the animal on display in the restaurant. So looking at this stuffed head, it looks like it's been cobbled together from various parts of other animals. Sure. And it's been here a long time. We're not the first, nor will we be the last, to look into this mysterious beast mounted on the wall watching people eat and drink. I mean, most of what we know about this story comes from the September 26th, 1962 Boston Globe article where columnist Ted Ashby came out to the restaurant to investigate the story. Go ahead. uh, Check out the article. All right. Uh, well, this is funny. Uh, the headline reads, World's last or first Egopantis rests above bar. <laughs> <laughs> the article explains how a local man wrote a letter to one Elizabeth Ryan of the American Institute asking for information on the origins of the species called Egopantis. Before the days of Google, obviously. Obviously. Ryan wrote back she believed that there was never such an animal and that it must be made up. So the owners at the time placed a pewter bowl next to the mounted head asking for donations to help get Elizabeth Ryan up to Shirley to examine the Egopantis head herself. As of September of 1962, the 18-month-old fun had raised 37 cents. (laughs) So uh, not quite enough. No, not yet. So writer Ted Ashby did help shed a little light onto the origins of the Egopantis. So the article mentions the co-owner back then said the Egopantis head was loaned to her by Arnold C. Dickinson of Lunenburg when they took ownership in 1946. So the stuffed head has been here since at least 1946. It has, which is still a pretty long stretch of time. So the most likely story is that Arnold Dickinson of Lunenburg either made the Egopantis or he got it from someone else. Yeah, that's what it would seem. And over time, you add in the Captain Nathaniel Smith part of the story, him being the restaurant's most famous neighbor, And it has a certain historical air to it. And the longer this head stares at people eating and drinking near the bar, the longer people wonder how much of the story is actually true. And people may also wonder how much they've had to drink. Still, (laughs) there's always a nugget of truth in there somewhere, right? Well, I'll drink to that. Cheers. And that takes us to After the Legend, where we explore this week's story a little deeper and sometimes get lost along the way. After the Legend is brought to you by our Patreon patrons. It's just three bucks per month, and our patrons get early ad-free access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. This is the ultimate group of insiders, and we appreciate their support more than we can ever express. They keep our lights on and the motors running. 
would like to have you be part of it too, just head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. Also, if you'd like to see some pictures of the Ego Pantis at the Bull Run Restaurant, just click on the link in the episode description or steer yourself to the New England Legends website and click on episode 303. It's quite a beast. Yeah, uh, staring at you at the bar uh, since 1946, at least anyway, that's, um, that's a long time. And then, you know, I, I love the, um, the story they, they put up right next to it, mm. which says about Captain Smith. Captain Smith was from Shirley. He did live nearby. And that just gives it this air of like, oh, this is historical. Right. right. This is real. This, this has is, to be real. This has to be real. I mean, the fur looks like a gorilla suit, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it looks like something. That's exactly what it looks like. Like a really bad, um, Gorilla suit from like Party Plus or one of those stores. Yeah. yeah. But the snout is weird. Like it sort of looks alligator y. Yep. But like not bumpy enough to be an alligator. Right. I don't know what the heck they cobbled this thing together from. But. Or it was actually a real beast. That's probably it. That makes, you know what? That makes more sense that this was the first and last of its <laughs> it kind. It could be. I, so I love this Boston Globe article from the 60s, right? Yeah. It, the story had caught his attention. He goes out there to write about it. And, um, and I love, it was sort of tongue in cheek, the old article, but, um, but sure. I mean, people are, are looking at this thing and wondering about it and, and they came and, and did a story, not the first, uh, taxidermied monster we've covered. Oh, what was the other one? The fur bearing trout. Oh, that's right. I remember that one. Northern yeah. Vermont. So, uh, there's a few of these actually. So the, um, yeah, the beaver trout, they would call it. Yeah. And, and so there's these mounted fish with fur. And we got to speak to someone from Vermont Fish and Wildlife, mm. who uh, is the proud manufacturer of, of one of them. And um, the story is that the lake was so cold that the trout would, would grow fur in the, in the winter. <laughs> right. And um, and so it's, uh, but, but there's a few of them around. So like a few restaurants and even like some side of the road, you know, um, souvenir shops had yeah. some up where you could see it. And you'd be like, what the heck is that thing? A, a, a mammal trout, um, which was a fun story to cover. Now, you, you wouldn't find these in the basement of someone's home. You'd find it at a restaurant, someplace that's trying to draw in customers. You it's know, working. It's working. I know. It's it's, working. I mean, it's a genius way to get I, business. Because now, I've never been. I know many friends who play there. It's a big musical Yeah, they do lots of live music, yeah. Um, but I've now I want to go just yeah. to see this thing. Just to see. And so, um, we've done stories of many haunted restaurants over the years, you mm -hmm. know, and Ghostly legends bring people in the door, but so do strange beasts mounted on the wall, whether they're fur-bearing trout or the egopantis. Uh, it becomes a discussion thing. And yeah. then someone's like, we should go see it. And what are you going to go there and see it and not buy a drink right. or, or have a lunch or something, right? What was that restaurant? I forgot. Bugaboo Creek or Bugaboo Bug oh, Creek. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're gone You'd now, go yeah. there. Yeah, but you'd go the there to, to get the talking moose on the, yeah. on the wall. So even if it's not real, we love... We love seeing things yeah. um, at our local restaurants. You don't want to just stare at a blank wall. No, right. And so, I mean, God, like all, how many restaurants put like so much kitsch stuff up? Right. You know, movie posters, skis, and, posters, yeah. like lobster traps, like whatever, right? Yeah. You, you know, you put stuff up on the walls for discussion. But this one goes a step further, though, because it's it's attached to a legend. Well, right. Yeah. And and it doesn't talk. But that's that's the next step. They got to make it animatronic, right? <laughs> just like, I'll tell you my story. Uh, so the funny thing is we've used the Wayback Machine, which is um, it's part of our org, And so the Wayback Machine allows you to look at a website from years ago. It's been... Oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, so like the, these web pages are long gone, right? but some of them have been, uh, you know, cataloged. Yeah. And so I could go back and look at the old Bull Run restaurant webpage. There's still there's still a page on their website about the Egopantis, mm. but the older website had the Egopantis telling you his own story in his own words, which is sort of funny, yeah. right? It was like, oh, and then Captain Smith, and I'm the only one of my kind, and now I'm extinct, <laughs> you know? So it's um, it's it's a pretty cute, um, you know, thing. Also, I think uh, we do need to come to the defense of Massachusetts. Why? So uh, Taxachusetts, <laughs> which, I mean, I've heard that my whole life, like that it's Taxachusetts. So I checked this, and um, I, it's not a fair nickname anymore. In uh, last year, 2022, the the top 10 highest states for, for taxes, uh, Massachusetts isn't even in the top 10. So we're not in the bottom 10 either. That's another legend that we just keep you know uh keeping alive and that's our own fault well, well shay's rebellion i i swear i mean that's got to be part of where it started they're like the states in debt huge debt and they're like we need to charge taxes and like didn't we just fight a whole war over this <laughs> and so uh so they were taxachusetts but yeah we're not even in the top 10 for for tax rate 
And I'm not being rude here. I'm yeah. just looking up concerts on Bull Run Restaurant. Oh, lots of bands play there, yeah. And I just, if I could. Livingston Taylor plays there somewhat regularly. and Jimmy Tingle, the, the Massachusetts comedian. He's oh. he's funny. Yeah, so not comics. just uh, music. No, no, yeah, they have comics and stuff. Livingston. That's funny. Livingston Taylor is playing on, uh, oh, this weekend, Saturday, which was the 11th. We I probably missed it. We yeah. missed it. <laughs> so, so that's okay. <laughs> but anyway, he's a regular there because he doesn't live too far away. Is he, is he close by? Yeah. Yeah, he's a Massachusetts oh, guy. Jethro Tull's Martin Barry is going to be there on the 16th. See? Don't say which month, 16th, because this episode, you know, will stand the test of time. Anyway, we're plugging the heck out of this restaurant. Is and, that a bad thing? No, it's fine. I, you know. A Night of Sinatra. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Let me know how it is. You're so nervous that I'm promoting another place. No, it's maybe fine. they'll advertise. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Um, but what's, what's what's great is you'll have the Sinatra crooner on stage, and all of our people will be in the bar looking at the head. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it down. I'm looking at the ego pantis. I don't recognize a lot of these people. Oh, the fools. You know the fools. Yeah, Massachusetts I I, based. I sadly, know many fools. No, it's a band. Oh, the comedy uh, act, but they're also a, a real band. Oh, cool. Um. They did a, a, a cover of um, Do I Diddy back in the day, like in the oh. 80s. That was big for them. Yeah. Psycho Chicken. That was another big one. <laughs> she Makes Me Feel Big. <laughs> okay. They're funny. Anyway, yeah, yeah. No. that's it. That's enough plugging for the bull run. Yeah. Bull, bull run. Excuse me. Love it. Love it. And of course, you know, Strange Animals, Strange Beasties. That's right in our wheelhouse. So thank you, Joe, for, uh, for tipping us off on this one. Jojo, appreciate it. Uh, do us a favor and take a minute to post a review for us wherever you get your podcast. Those reviews help lift us up in a sea of crowded podcasts. Also, when you share our episode on your social media or tell others about us, it helps us grow. The more people listening, the more people who share weird stories with us. And you hear about more strangeness. We'd like to thank our Patreon patrons. Thank you to our sponsors. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think. 